as the federal government threatens to impose state of emergency in Anambra, the People's Democratic Party, a state commissioner and the Middle Belt Forum register their displeasure and disagreement. And President Mohamed Buhari presents Nigeria's 16 trillion Naira 2022 budget to the National Assembly. So we wonder, should we borrow to fund the budget? We'll be talking to an economist on the show. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Agriculture. In order to ensure the sanctity of the November 6 governorship elections in Anambra State, the federal government indicated that it was prepared to impose a state of emergency in the state. Now, this was said by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami. In response, the Anambra State Governor, Willy Obiano, disclosed that the threat to the declaration of a state of emergency in the state was not President Muhammad Buhari's idea. Governor Biano disclosed this after a meeting with President Buhari in the presidential villa in Abuja. He reported Malami to the president on the matter. The governor also described the threat as unfortunate, wondering why he had not contemplated the imposition of an emergency rule in northern states during massive killings occasioned by banditry. However, the People's Democratic Party PDP condemned the plan, saying that it was a ploy to by the APC-led government to rig the governorship election come November. The Commissioner for Information in Anambra State, Don Adirumba, uh, also spoke against the threat, stating that the Anambra State government had not experienced the level of killings recorded in Kaduna, Borono, Zamfara, and other states where bandits had murdered many uh, citizens. Well, we are going to be joined in the studio this evening by the Honourable Commissioner for Information um, in Anambra State, Don C. Adinumba. He is joining us live um, via Zoom. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. And also, joining, and also joining us live here in the studio is a legal practitioner, Tunji Abdulami. Thank you very much for joining us. Tunji. Thank you very much. So I'm going to start with you, Honourable Commissioner, because it's very interesting um, what's happening in a number of states. First things first, uh, we've seen reports and stories uh, emanating from your state uh, of massive killings, unrest, state sit-at-home orders. Um, I mean, the list is endless. And you are in the hit of preparing for an election come November. In fact, it's just a few weeks from now. Uh, and so it makes us wonder, for those of us who are watching from the outside, who's in charge, especially for the sit-at-home order. I remember the last time we, were, we went to, into the streets and uh, were speaking to people in your state and, of course, the southeast about the sit-at-home order. Many complained that their businesses were suffering. Many were tired of sitting at home, but they were afraid, mostly, as to um, what would happen to them if they decided to go about their businesses. So I want to ask you, sir, who's in charge of the state in Anambra? There is no doubt was saber that uh, the elected government of Anambra states is fully in charge. Once in a while, we can have one or two rogue elections who can come out from nowhere, cause some mischief, and then disappear into the thing. Hey, that's a good thing. Just two days ago, the governor and the Abdul presidential candidate, Professor Chuku Masanudo, went on a campaign of two local government areas. And the rallies were hugely successful. So many people, and uh, they were very happy, singing, dancing, felt so much at home. We are continuing our tour of local government areas, and we are visiting every local government area, to one of them, the Anambra States. I think the press tends to exaggerate the uh, level of um, violence in our environment currently. What well, is no more than two weeks to start with. Secondly, businesses are still running, churches are full every day, 
All our matches are on. No disturbance. Not even security men in any of the markets. The hotels are there, thriving. Only once in a while somebody comes, does some mischief and escapes. And for your information, by the way, you don't have masculine listening and I'm busted. No. We have recorded 12 casualties in the last two weeks. And the casualties include, very unfortunately, a most revered son of an ambassador, Dr. Chike Akutuki, the husband of the legendary former director general of NAVDAC, Dora Akutuki. Um, okay, a doctor has also been killed. These are the two high profile cases. But I do know that in a place like Pachu State, as many as 18, one night, Zafara, over 34, Kaduna, about the same figure, that Zafara sometimes 50 in one night. We have had only 12 in two weeks in the number of states. And I can tell you in the next few days, everything will come to an end. Well, I, I'm more yeah, curious. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry to talk over you. I'm more curious, um, and, in, and, and I don't want us in any way in the course of this conversation to make light of the number of people who have been casualties, whether it be one or two. Value is placed upon every life uh, that Absolutely. is lost. Absolutely. But yeah. I'm more curious to understand why all of a sudden a number is facing what it is facing. I'm more curious because your government is in charge, like you said from the beginning. So we want to know. What do you think, as a spokesperson for the government, is responsible for this recent up unrest or uprising? And you said that recently you and your governor, the party, uh, have been campaigning in two local governments. But we also uh, oh, have been made to understand that yeah. some of those campaigns were obstructed by gunmen. No, no, it's not possible. It was reported that Absolutely. in a number, no, 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 and it was no. not just your campaign. No, 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 it's not possible. No, we are sorry, I remember. So please, I don't understand who gave you the report. We it's went all over the to papers. Anambra East local government area. We went to Anambra West local government area. Absolutely peaceful. We have not stopped for a moment. We are continuing. So you Even have. Even the day. The, uh, guy, um, no, 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 no. Uh, I've told you, we are fully in charge. Just was in a while. Some rascal, some criminal, strikes from nowhere and disappears into thin air. That has been the situation. You cannot compare what they have in Anambra with even APC control states in the southeast. For example, they born. We are up to 30 persons, 20, 18 have been killed in one day. In Imo states, well done. So, and nobody is thinking of having sort of emergency in any of these states. Even in APC control states, like Niger states, a military aircraft on a mission has been brought down. In Borodo states, APC control the same Nobody is thinking of a sort of emergency in any of these places. Rather, elections have been held, and they were successful, and they were peaceful, and they were transparent. Hmm. I'm, I, I want to move on from that. But you're asking, why all of a sudden? Yes. You have this problem in a number of states. You can guess the answer. You know it. It is evident to us that the killings were organized. By whom? Politically motivated people. The events of the last few days tell us the direction where they were coming from. We are compiling the evidence. Once we have enough to prosecute successfully in courts, we do just that. We go after those people one by one. But you mentioned that and they I'm come. But you mentioned that they come up from nowhere, yeah. and so and then they disappear I'm, again into thin air. So how are you going but to be able to catch them if you do not know yeah, where they come from? Where that's what we're looking into now, and we are getting very useful leads for the past seven and a half years. Anambra remained the most peaceful state in the whole country. 
I will proudly tell you we are the only state in the last seven half years that has not experienced one bank arm robbery. One bank arm robbery. Despite having the biggest markets in the whole of West Africa. Open markets where people trade in raw cash. That's how peaceful and apartheid has been. Not one single incident of kidnapping in the last one year, for example. I don't know if there is any other state that has that record. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, innocent people are being shot. This is only one in a series of measures taken to impose themselves on the leadership of an armed state. Having failed to discourage people from coming out to attend rallies, they are now thinking of emergency rule. Very simple. The same people who did everything possible to stop Professor Saludo from flying the Abda flag, they went to the extent of going to Brinikudu in Jigawa State, 20 kilometers to the Jere Republic. Sorry. And um, we fear the party leadership being aware of it. They got their kind of journey, which I'm glad to announce that the Court of Appeal, sitting in Kano, has, of course, discarded. So, but let me ask you do you think it's sheer coincidence that in the last five months, an Ambra State has had five commissioners of police? I repeat. In the last five years, sorry, five months, five commissioners of police. Can it be that right? You will come to an arrested as a commissioner of police before you could know you are left from your right. You are asked to go. Another person comes. Does that make for stability? Does that make for proper police? So I want to I want to put I want to put this last question to you before we talk about the state of emergency and its implications. Yes. Um, so yes. you're insinuating or you're trying to point us in a direction. You're saying that all of the unrest, the killings, um, in an amber state are perpetrated by your po political opponents. And and when you say political opponent, it means that it could be the PDP, it could be the APC. Is that what you're saying? Uh, and I'm, I'm again, it's a two pronged question. Why would the people in those parties want to kill the husband of a former NAFTAC head in this country or try to disrupt, you know, um, the political setting in the states if they're also going to have to benefit from it? Because if there's a state of emergency in the state, it affects everybody. Please help us to understand this. You have seen people seeking a state of emergency gratuitously. You can only have a state of emergency when there is an extraordinary situation, when there is a total breakdown of law and order, or when Nigeria is at war, or such a grave circumstance, which is not already having an ambassador state today. We are going about doing a normal business. We are going about having our own rallies with huge numbers of people, huge crowds everywhere. Petrol stations run 24 hours throughout the night, throughout the day in an number of states. So where does this thing come from? I am glad that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has dissociated himself from this move. Okay. Just one person is having a brainwave, not the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm -hmm. not the administration of President Muhammadu. Let me let me in, engage the lawyer in the studio because we want to talk about the um, legality of um, the AGF mulling over the idea of a state of emergency in an amber state. I mean, um, I, I listened to one of our reporters who spoke, who who said uh, they were at um, in Abuja after his meeting, uh, the, pres the governor's meeting with Mr. President, and the president said that he had no idea about this declaration. So let's talk about the AGF making this statement. Um, and let's break down what the state of emergency is and what would even uh, predicate it in the first instance. I think it's, un it's unfortunate uh, that the Attorney General is making that uh, such statement. 
as far as I'm concerned, is just eating up the polity because uh, it's unnecessary at this level to call for a state of emergency in a number of states. What has happened in a number of states has not even is not even half of what has happened in uh, Sanfara, Kaduna, and some other states in the north. And in that circumstance, I, I don't see a reason why a state of emergency should be declared in that uh, state in, in a number of states. And to me, again, I also feel declaration of state, uh, uh, consideration of declaration of state of emergency in any state of defense in Nigeria as an indictment on the federal government. So, How so? Yeah, because uh, if you look at our st structure, the security architecture of the country is basically in the hand of the president. In other words, it is commander in chief of armed forces. He controls all the apparatus of the security in the country. In other words, you cannot deal with the I I I IGP. The commission of police in the states must take order from the IGP. And IGP is responsible, is, 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 is uh, accountable to, to the, the president. president. So you know, indirectly, it is his responsibility to provide security. So if you are declaring state of emergency because there is no security in the, in the state, you are saying you are fair in your responsibility to provide security in that, in that, in that, in that part of the state. And we're very quick to say declare a state of emergency on health care, declare a state of emergency on this and that. But do we really know what a state of emergency is? That's why we have you as a lawyer in the studio. No, it, um, what are the implications? What is a state of emergency? What are the key components of a state of emergency? Because I've heard people say um, that when you say it's a state of emergency, it means that you're abdicating responsibility as a civilian government for the army to take mm, over. There, there's no way that is, that is stated in the Constitution. Section 305 of the Constitution provides what uh, on circumstances when a, the president can declare or can make proclamation regarding state of emergency. In other words, for the president to the president has the power to make declaration of a proclamation of a state of emergency. So the Constitution he must, clearly says the president has the power, has not the, the power. attorney general, he has the power. If, not the dep not not the vice president, not the no, speaker he, he, of no, the no, house. No, 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 it's the president. It's the the president. Of the president. But the attorney general being the legal officer of the country. Has a, it has a duty to advise the president on, the, on that aspect. But so does he, he have the, the right one, to make that If the president wants to do that, the president has to make recourse to him. In, in, that's some, uh, in the in, internal arrangement mm -hmm. to uh, seek his advice. As but to, does to he have about. the right to make that declaration as the Attorney General of the Federation? No, he doesn't have it. He can't declare it. He was just, if you look at his statement, that statement can be interpreted in two, in two fold, as for me. If you read it, if, 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 if you look at the statement critically, not only the last aspect of it, he said, they will do everything possible to ensure election hold in uh, Anambra, including consideration of a uh, declaration of state of emergency. In other words, this concern is about having election in Anambra state. And uh, if, you, if you look at that uh, section 3052, subsection 3, when you say you are declaring state of emergency in a state, you are saying you want to use extraordinary measure to ensure peace and order if, if there is no peace and order in that state. Which means, and for you to declare state of emergency, there must be war. There must be actual breakdown of uh, law or peace and order in the, in, the, in the state. There must be threat of violence that cannot be, that, that is difficult to, 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 to subdue in the state. Um, so, under the, uh, under the uh, former president, Goodluck Jonathan, there were three states that he declared a state of emergency in. And we remember uh, at the time, Boko Haram was trying to declare those states a caliphate. Uh, hence, you know, the president's calling for a state of emergency, and it was three states. Um, and just as you have said, so there has to be a total breakdown of law. There must order. be a breakdown of law. There must be war. There must be issues that are, cannot be resolved in terms of uh, security and peace in, the, in, the, in that state. And when you declare, you see, the, the, the most, uh, the President Robert Sanjo used a state of emergency when he was in power, but it was an abuse. Because there's, no, uh, there's nothing in that position of that says when you are imposing a state of emergency in any state, the governor should be, should, be, should, be, should be sent packing. There's nothing in that, in that constitution. What the constitution is saying is that you can apply extraordinary measure. In other words, you know, the, what we've been doing Couldn't in this country that have before, been also considered as an extraordinary no, what measure? No, that's not an extraordinary measure. I'm just asking a question. Being anticipated by the constitution. It's not democratically. There's no power. No president has the power to remove any governor. So that cannot be an extraordinary measure. Because, you see, when you say as I'm sure here now, we were used to deployment of a uh, military. But ordinarily, you cannot deploy military without the resolution to the uh, without a, 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 a approval by the, by the National Assembly. But in this country, we are doing that. So if you are deploy, if you are saying state of emergency now, that means you can deploy military in that, in that, in that, in that, in, to, to that state to ensure peace and uh, uh, another is maintained or is restored 
in that in that particular. So, but today we have uh, we have turned state of emergency to a situation whereby once it is clear, it is declared, the governor will have to they will send the governor packing, they will send all the all the all the commissioner or whatever the state apparatus uh, the structure those in, the, in on ground they will send them packing and then they start, start uh, impose a military uh, rule. In that that's what people are that has been declared illegal by the courts. So that is not the circumstance we are talking about now. So to me, the extraordinary measure being being taught about by the by, by the AG is about in, imposing the military the, deploying military the force in that in that state. But I'm I'm worried, I'm worried that the AG or so any other person is thinking they are just thinking about the, uh, doing extraordinary measure to cure security uh, 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 crisis in the, in the state country when election is approaching. It, that means it's only when we have an election that they will think of finding solutions to issues. The, the responsibility of the government is to provide security and their welfare. It's not only about ensuring election is, con is, is, is conducted. So it's worrisome for me, to, for, for us to say, look, it's only when we have election issue that the, the government will be more active in ensuring that this election take place. I remember in 2015, uh, prior to the uh, election, uh, the first ele the 2015 election that brought the president into power, the, there was a crisis in Bono State. Which was which make it impossible for them to do election, and the president say, "Give me just two weeks." Behold, they were able to 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 to, to ensure uh, peace and order in that in that in that in that state. And it's, so, which means, if there was no election, the crisis will still continue and people will still suffer. So it is unfortunate so this, that. Our, so, 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 so this statement implies that maybe our governments know what to do to quell this insurgence. Exa but they would exactly, not my do point. It. exactly my point. Exactly my point. They are not. They are not. That, that shows is what they are doing without not taking. As, as a severe method to uh, measures to ensure this crisis are, are, are resolved or restored is, is deliberate because it, when it comes to election, they know the way out and they will want to use every measure to be able to get as a peace and order in that state to be able to, 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 to conduct election. Um, Honorable Co Commissioner, let's come back to you and talk about the way forward because the elections, like I said at the beginning, is, very, is drawing closer and uh, for, for even INEC has come up to say that they're really worried uh, as to how safe and secure these elections will be and violence free. Violence free. Um, what is the, the state government doing to make sure that people can leave their homes and be certain that they can cast their votes peacefully and make sure that their votes count and not be you know, having to scamper for safety or because they want to exercise their franchise? You know, in the last three years, well, say four years, we have had um, two major elections, one gubernatorial in November 2017, and the other, the general election of 2019. Each was very peaceful. Not one incident of violence, I repeat, not even one incident of violence anywhere in a number of states. So we're not used to electoral violence. It's alien to our people, to our society and culture. What is going on now is very unusual. It's contrived, it's artificial, it's strange, and it's organized by vested interests. That is what I've been trying to do. I couldn't believe it when I had the Attorney General Federation say yesterday that I accused the state government of not doing its job to prevent security for the people. I'm happy the Leonard. Um, Consul there with you in the studio has many points eloquently that security is basically on the exclusive federal basis. The segment has no control over the police force or the army or the Iron Navy or even the civil defense. Everything begins and ends with the federal government of Nigeria. So when Malami seeks to indict the administration of Anambra State is actually indicting the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is the commander in chief and who oversees the police force and other security agencies. So he's actually passing a vote of no confidence in the federal government he's serving. And that's serious. You begin to wonder if. He has the moral right to continue to hold that office, especially after the president has informed the governor of Anambra State that he had no heart in the plans to 
impose a state of emergency in an state. As the lawyer in the has pointed out, Tunji Abdul Hamid, it is the responsibility of the president to impose, not the attorney general. So the attorney general to now assume the duties of the president shows something is certainly wrong. Yeah. I do not know whether he's the proper and fit person to hold that office. And by the way, the Attorney General is a member of the Andiuba Campaign Council. That is very unusual. The duty, the office of the Attorney General is a secret trust. It's one of the few public offices created directly by the Constitution and named by the Constitution and written in the Constitution. You should not double into local politics. Let alone be a member of a, the Gubernatorial Council of any state. So we get it. You're saying it, that there's vested interest in this election, but you haven't answered my is, question. How do you intend member. to clear your name? Because yes. you have to have a clean slate of sorts to be able to deal with the, the issue Public of... Public interest. Or the he threat. is called Attorney General of the Federation, not of any campaign council. And he is number one in the list of members of Andrew Bagel with the Terror Council. You can see why he's abused his office. How does the okay. state government intend to make the state safe enough for elections to happen and without we, we, any we, doubt, I, any item? Yes, doubt? I do not I do not want to disclose to you. Let us see. But will that be the right case? Can we say that in the next few weeks, Anambra is going to experience some, some sort of peace and calm, and we will not be having to read from the pages of our papers more than one week. that there's one more, more insert, one um, uh, upsurge or killing here and there? Yes. You know very well that our governor has the reputation of being the most security conscious governor in Nigeria's history and has been rewarded so many times for his commitments to peace and safety. We are very proud of that record we hold and we have held it for the past seven and a half years. So these organized kidnappings, the organized violence, we come to an end in not more, we're going to check it considerably in not more than one week from now. And may I also reveal that part of the reason why the governor had to go to our the president was to discuss the security of the states. As I've told you, a situation where the federal government changes the commission of police every month is unacceptable. Okay. For the past five months, we have had five commissioners of police. You can, would, you, would you like that? Well, we have to go. We, uh, I, I know that our time is up, but I want to say thank you. Um, Donald Adinumba is the Honorable Commissioner for Information in Anambra State. Thank you for By speaking way, with please, us. My name is C. Don Adinumba, not Don C. Adinumba. Oh, C. I Don Adinumba. Okay. C. Well, Don we'll Adinumba, not Don C. No, no, that's a different name. All not right. my name. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. My and pleasure. Of course, Merit. Sunji Adulamid is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, Sunji, for helping us to understand uh, the situation. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, the newly proposed 2022 budget, we're going to be talking about it. And, of course, the question is, how much should Nigeria borrow in 2022 to fund it? And we'll be back. Talking.